This video will serve as a great first look at ePrime 3, covering basic interface navigation, an overview of the slide and list objects, as well as simple design concepts. But first let's jump into the completed experiment, then we'll review the interface we used to create it. We'll examine a reaction time experiment, in which participants must correctly match the color of a car to a button. After the introduction, the trials consist of three looping screens. There is a fixation point, the main stimulus display, and feedback showing reaction time and accuracy. At random, either a blue or yellow car will be shown. A mouse is used for input, along with two buttons, though a keyboard could be used just as easily. When the trials finish, participants are presented with a survey, and then we say goodbye. When the session is complete, the first thing to find is your data. The output window provides a link to open eDataAid, where your session data will automatically be uploaded. The file will also appear in the same location as your experiment file. Just to the right is the Advisor tab, which flags potential design problems. These aren't always fatal flaws, but the Advisor provides valuable insight on best practices. The Output and Advisor windows aren't necessary for design. You can close and reopen any windows using the View tab. Also, holding the Alt key while pressing 1 through 7 can do the same thing. All windows are able to be moved and resized as well. Now an overview of the three design windows in E-Prime. First up is the toolbox. The toolbox contains E-objects. Only five are needed for this experiment. Procedure and list objects are used for organization. Slide, feedback, and text objects will appear to participants. Click and drag an object onto a timeline to begin building. To the right is the experiment explorer. Objects can be added directly to this window. This window provides a view of your full experiment. The dotted line shows which objects are related to each other. The trial list branches off, creating its own procedure with its own display objects. Double click on any object to open it in the workspace. Open now in the workspace is the session proc, a procedure object. Every new experiment starts with a blank session proc. Objects which only need to appear once, like instructions, should be placed here. The trial list object creates a new procedure. The trial list sets the trial proc to loop six times, three samples for both the blue car and the yellow car. The trial list settings only affect objects on the trial proc. Layout can be further customized by clicking and dragging windows to any area. Explore the layout and, when designing, I like to maximize the size of the workspace as much as possible. To further illustrate experiment structure and organization, a good tool is found by right-clicking in the Experiment Explorer. Activate the Allow Collapsing option. This helps visualize object relationships. The session proc includes all objects. The trial list contains only its own procedure, and it has no effect on the instructions, survey, or goodbye objects. Remember to save when a change is made, as there is no autosave. From the toolbox, click and hold the slide object, then drag and drop it onto a procedure. Slide objects display any combination of text, images, video, or audio. I can also add objects directly to the Experiment Explorer. With both procedures open, I can view every object within the workspace. Remove objects from their procedure by right-clicking on them in either the procedure or the Explorer. 
this will not permanently delete them if it might be needed later. To delete objects, right-click on the Unreferenced folder and select Delete. Now I will show how to manage your trial procedure by editing my trial list. Changes will only affect objects on the trial proc. Going into the trial list will allow modification of the trial proc and all objects on that procedure. The first property to determine is sample size. Change the sample size by increasing the weight of each row. The summary at the top will reflect this change. The six samples of the trial proc will be replayed as a demonstration. On each loop, one of the rows will be randomly selected and played. When row one plays with the blue car, the correct answer will always be set to button one. The yellow car then is tied to button two as the correct answer. To choose random or sequential for sample selection, click on the orange property tab above the list. Opening the stimulus slide object shows how attributes are used to display multiple media files and determine correct answers. Open both the slide and list objects at once to see how they work together. Introducing the slide object, the first element to note is the sidebar containing sub-objects. Click to select one, then click again on your slide to place the sub-object. You can select your active sub-objects from the drop-down menu and change their properties here. Looking under the file name, enter the attribute stimulus surrounded by brackets. This instructs E-Prime to pull the content located in the stimulus column. This button opens my experiment folder and only shows compatible media files. The file name in the experiment folder must match exactly what is in the list. Next is the property tab for the entire slide object. The duration input tab has several critical properties that must be checked. In the correct field, enter the attribute determining the correct response. The devices section allows me to add elements like my buttons or a keyboard to use as input. Always check to see if the duration field is set correctly. This slide is now set to appear for 4000 milliseconds. The duration of the object can be set to end only when a response is made. To help show the versatility of attributes, I will randomize the position of the blue and yellow buttons on each sample. First create two new attributes, one to control the x-axis of button 1, which I give a name that is descriptive of its purpose, and the other to control the x-axis of button 2. For it to work, we need a minimum of four unique rows or samples, creating every variation of button locations and car images. To do this, I click Add Multiple Levels. I can efficiently copy multiple cells by highlighting them, then clicking and dragging when the plus sign appears. Or I can simply type it into each cell. Button 1 and Button 2 are the default button names and can be changed from the button sub properties. The newly entered text is gray because a procedure must be set for the new rows, or samples. A drop-down appears to show my existing procedures. To create a new procedure, click on the cell and type a new name. In the attributes controlling the x-axis, I will enter percentages. This is the recommended way to set the position of sub-objects. Using percentages ensures the experiment remains consistent across differently sized displays. 0% would be the left edge of the screen and 100% the right edge of the screen. I can navigate through the list using the arrows on my keyboard and pressing enter when I have finished typing in a cell. The size of every cell can also be altered. 
To input the attributes, I will right click on my button sub object and enter the sub object property page. If we take a quick glance at the response section, you can see how I knew to enter button 1 as a value in the list. This value can be changed to any name you like. Moving to the frame tab, I can change the position of the sub object. On the x axis, input the attribute from the list. Attributes can be used with almost any property in E prime. If I enter the theme tab, I can change the color or text of the button. Then I could use an attribute to change these properties on each sample. Remember to use brackets to identify text as an attribute. I repeat the process for the second button. To view different ways of using lists, visit our experiment library. It contains dozens of unique experiments free for download. To find this, click help in the toolbar and select resources. Also, don't hesitate to reach out to our dedicated support team and speak directly with an experienced ePrime user. Again, remember to save when changes are made. I can also change how sub-objects are layered, moving one on top of another. Adding attributes moved my button sub-objects to the middle of the slide. It will not appear this way in the experiment. If I move the buttons to their original position and check the sub-object properties, you can see the x-axis is still set to use the attribute. And by moving a few elements, I can show more accurately how it will appear. Again, remember to save when changes are made. Showing another demonstration, we can see what the updated trial will look like. The randomized position of the buttons makes it harder to predict and increases the reaction time. Samples can appear twice in a row. To prevent this, go into the list properties. Set the list to cycle three times and change the weight of each row to one. This will still give us 12 samples, while preventing the same sample from being played back to back. After testing the experiment, the Output and Advisor tabs automatically appear. Click the link with the EDAT3 extension to open EDATA8. In this application, we are given a wide range of tools to filter and sort data. This is also when easily understood attribute names become important. The EDAT file contains the independent and dependent variables from your experiment session. Data logging settings can be changed in object properties. It is recommended that you review your experiment's data output prior to collecting real data to be sure you have everything you need for your analysis. Descriptive statistics can be performed using the Analyze button. To see more ePrime tutorials, please go to our channel and subscribe. Thanks for watching.